and we first do this data set manager. And this basically highlights the whole section that we want to run the newer tools uh, model on in terms of the companies and the metrics themselves. Okay, so it it shows the whole matrix here and identifies the metrics. And it also identifies my, my dependent variable, which is the S&P rating. So I'll say, okay. The next thing, so, and, and it highlights this whole area that it's gonna evaluate all the way down to, um, the 37, <clears throat> all the way down to the 3766, as well as those companies that I want to uh, do a forecast for, okay? Because the values for my S&P, there is no rating there. So it will provide a rating for those companies. So next thing I want to do then is I want to train it. And right here, it shows that uh, here's my 23%. That's going to be my test group. Uh, this 180 is actually the random number. It doesn't say random number, but this basically is the random number. Um, then we want to enable our live prediction. And we also want to calculate the variable impacts. Then for the net configuration, uh, when uh, uh, we have a uh, numeric value for our dependent variable, which is what is the case for our S&P rating, okay, it is numeric, okay, it will um, best perform this PN slash GRN debt. And we also want to uh, look at the linear regression performance that I showed you earlier. So, Finally, we have the runtime, and this is basically uh, various ways you can stop it in case it keeps uh, running and running and running, okay? Um, I just say two hours, but it, it doesn't take nearly as long. You'll see in a second. So then you hit next, and now it's checking the training settings and the data. Um, it says uh, a training set has is already there. Do you want to delete? And sure, it, it doesn't hurt anything. Let's just rerun it again. So we redevelop our, our neural network model. <laughs> and this gives a summary of, of the things that we wanted done. Um, it also says uh, uh, our total number of cases in which we have 2,900 um, in the training uh, 866 in the test group, which is our 23%. And we are trying to get a prediction for 18 of these companies. And again, it shows uh, your metrics and uh, identifies your dependent variable as well. And it gives you any warnings in, in, that you want to do. And this is fine, this can be removed, removed because we're just gonna re rerun this uh, uh, neural network model. Um, after um, it was run, it gives you a question. Would you like to view the testing sensitivity dialog? Uh, this analysis um, basically shows, like I showed you before, it shows um, the root mean square of various uh, um, percentages associated with your test group. You know, and we, I showed before where, where 23 was the optimal. And we don't, uh, so we don't want to run this since we already know we we perfected this model. You know that 23% was the proper. So we want to say no here since we're just interested in forecasting what that S&P rating is for those 18 uh, companies. 
So then it, it provides the output uh, of the neural tools model. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and this should match exactly uh, what I had when I first developed this model. Okay. So if I want to, I could compare. So with this model that it just ran, you know, it showed my uh, number of cases in my training group. It uh, showed the percent that was bad that I showed uh, previous on a previous PowerPoint slide. And it also showed what that root mean square error was. And um, this is for the testing group, okay? It shows uh, the, the tolerance was, again, uh, satisfied. Um, again, I, I have uh, 18 companies that want to predict what that uh, uh, rating is. And this is the variable impact associated with those metrics. Um, <clears throat> and you can see from comparing with uh, when I first ran this model that these percentages are the same, okay, going down, and the linear prediction, okay, is also the same. Okay, so the, I'm just, I just do this as a check to make sure that um, in forecasting what the uh, rating is that the model did not change and it shouldn't and, and as you can see it didn't. So let's not save this portion of it. So if we go back to the data. You can see now uh, that uh, for those 18 companies, it provided a rating, okay? And uh, the my, my uh, chart here saying what the rating is, okay, is over here on the right, okay, which I showed before in uh, the PowerPoint presentation. But now I want to uh, correct this for, for the bias that we detected earlier, okay? And uh, to do that, I ran my regression, okay? And this was my polynomial regression that I developed, okay, from, uh, from doing the regression of the actuals on the predicted value, okay? And so if I replace these reference with the, you know, with the uh, predict, predicted for the proper company here, okay, I get the adjusted value, okay, of the S&P rating. So, um, as you can see, first company, you can see that it went from 1646 Okay, again, this is a poorly rated uh, company and the adjustment uh, knocked it down. Because remember I said before, for those companies that are poorly re uh, rated, you want to basically push those down. And for those companies where the rating was, in this case, the next one, the rating was quite high, 3.17, it was probably overestimated. So therefore you wanna push that up. And that's basically what this did to get a, a, uh, a an adjusted rating for, for the bias. And then when I provide my information to the credit department, generally uh, those ratings that fell within plus or minus uh, 0.1, okay, I would say it was solid. So this one was like a solid B rating. Um, the, uh, the ones that were somewhat in the middle Okay, like the uh, 5.84 is between, I can see over here.